As always, we kick off the 10 o'clock hour with Sporting a Cause with Willie Hallahan. Of course, sportingacause.com on the web. Willie has a blog, but he also has a list of chronological events coming up, and they're all sports-related and somehow, well, sports-related, and then they're all fundraisers somehow. And uh, we live in strange times and different times right now, but uh, it, the march goes on, and let's bring in Willie Hallahan. Good, good morning, Willie. Good morning, Marshall. You know, strange and different for sure. Um, uh, but the beat goes on. You know, this uh, we, there are things coming up, uh, altered, uh, canceled, uh, but worthy of note. Uh, this weekend, I mentioned it last weekend, but yesterday and today, this is probably an event that's been the least affected by by uh, the pandemic because it was kind of a virtual event anyway. It's the Connecticut Trails Day 2020. And it was meant uh, basically, uh, it, was, it was an offshoot of National Trails Day, which was a federal event, but uh, to uh, shed light on all the areas, the trails, the reserves and parks and so forth that Connecticut has that, that the public has access to. And... Um, there may have been a, a little bit of ceremony uh, scheduled. That went away, of course. But they basically turned it into a do-it-yourself event where people just go and, uh, and hike. Uh, that's become very big lately. I mean, it's quite timely, really, because the, the idea of people being sequestered and, and, and hunkering inside and everything, having a chance to get out and get in the fresh air has become a big deal, and this is a perfect way to do that. Um, the, uh, it's sponsored by the Connecticut Forest and Parks Association. They have a website, a very comprehensive site. It's, it's great uh, to tell people about. Uh, it's like 230 different areas and trails and so forth in the state that people can use. And uh, you can access it. If you, if you go to my website, sportingthecause.com, and on the uh, home page, upcoming events, you'll see today, Connecticut Trails Day. Click on that. And it'll take you to a link that takes you to this uh, this list of, of parks and uh, uh, trails and so forth. And it'll tell you everything you need to know. It's uh, very good. And uh, it's not just for this weekend. It's for forever, really. Uh, you, you'll be encouraged. You'll see uh, trails maybe downstate someplace. Uh, and you might want to take a ride and try someplace different. Anyway, it's, it, it's all good. Uh, tomorrow was supposed to be the Murphy Open Golf Tournament. I've been talking about how that's been canceled, of course. <clears throat> it was sponsored by, is sponsored by the Tri-State Chamber of Commerce. And uh, Jeannie Salader, who is the tournament uh, chairperson, has encouraged people, golfers, to maybe get their foursomes together and play around the golf anyway. Uh, in the next couple of days, even though uh, the tournament's over, doesn't mean you can't go to a, a course uh, nearby, play around, and... Maybe, just maybe, most importantly, uh, pass a hat and uh, collect some funds for the Jane Lloyd Fund because they were to be the beneficiary of this tournament. And the Jane Lloyd is, uh, Fund, as much as anybody, has suffered because they've had several fundraising events, both big ones, major ones, and small ones, canceled or postponed uh, this spring alone. Uh, so, uh, you know, play around the golf, uh, play it for Murph. Uh, Bill Mayberry, after whom the tournament's named, and uh, take up a collection for the Jane Lloyd Fund. I think Jeannie he says for the, for the foursome that collects the most money, she's got a little prize for them. But uh, um, most importantly, think of the Jane Lloyd Fund. They do great work around here. They they provide uh, living expenses for people who had a cancer diagnosis, and and I know several families who have benefited from it, and uh, it, it changes their lives. Um, this week, this coming week, in this coming weekend were a big, was a big weekend for Special Olympics. The uh, Friday and Saturday of the 12th and 13th uh, uh, was the weekend where the summer games for Special Olympics were being held all over the country. Uh, Special Olympics is an international organization and, and certainly uh, uh, an American institution, but each state has its own program. Each state is in charge of its programs and its fundraising and everything. So every state was having two-day summer uh, games this coming weekend, and they've all that's all changed now. Uh, in addition to that, every uh, Summer Olympics is preceded by a torch run. This is a big, big deal. It's a, it's a fundraising event. Uh, the law enforcement world is very closely tied with Special Olympics, 
and um, every every year preceding the summer games, there would be this torch run that goes through the, the either the, the counties or the state where the summer games are going to be held. Uh, law enforcement; these aren't just a few officers that uh, happen to be off duty to do this. This this brings uh, state police, sheriffs, uh, police chiefs, um, secret service agents, FBI. Uh, they all get involved in this run, and typically, when it, in better times, it would be a, a relay kind of situation where they'd uh, they'd carry the torch from one town to the next. Somebody else would take it, and, and so on, and end up with a special Olympian who lights the the, the torch to uh, start the games. But uh, of course, that's all changed now. Uh, for um, Special Olympics Connecticut. That torch run has uh, been turned into uh, a virtual event, and uh, the Friday and Saturday summer games have have become virtual. Uh, these these athletes they don't just get together four times a year for for games. They train all year long, and I'll get to that um, more in a minute. Uh, so they've been they've known for some time that the games are going to be virtual. So they've been training and uh, competing and. They, they get to turn in their times, and, and um, it'll be a competition in, in that sense, but uh, there'll be no physical one. Um, and um, I'm going to cover the three states that are of interest uh, to sporting a cause, the tri-state area. Um, Special Olympics Massachusetts also has gone virtual, and uh, their, their torch run has become a cruiser convoy, they call it, and uh, the law enforcement people will basically form a parade starting at the Berkshire Mall on the 13th and, um, uh, and, and run their torch run that way. And in over, sadly, over in New York State, the summer games have been canceled completely. They decided uh, that you know, uh, everybody assesses their, their situation, and um, they just chose not to hold it at all. So uh, that's, that's sad. But anyway, throughout the world, uh, um, and certainly in North America, the Special Olympics are a big deal. And that's pretty much it. But uh, Marshall, I, uh, some time ago, I expressed uh, a desire when, when there was air time, and, and these days when uh, events are being canceled, I have a little bit of extra. I wanted to start uh, profiling, if you will, uh, charities that uh, end up on my website for one reason or another, uh, both local and um, and uh, larger than that. And I thought I'd do Special Olympics today, just because next weekend is such a, a big deal. I think everybody's heard of Special Olympics for sure, but I'm not sure people know that much about it. And it's it's really fascinating from its origin and how it's evolved. And um, it was started by Eunice Kennedy Shriver. She was part of the Kennedy family. Her uh, it was a large family. I think it was like seven or eight children. And, uh, she was her brothers were Bobby and Ted Kennedy, and of course uh, JFK, our president. And um, one of their siblings, I think her, it was Rosemary was her name, she was uh, intellectually impaired, intellectually challenged. And uh, back then, uh, this is 1968, I, I was a senior in high school, and I used, uh, thinking back, I just think of that as being kind of enlightened times, you know, modern times. But in some ways it really wasn't, because back in the 60s, um, intellectually challenged people were hidden away. Quite frankly, they're either in institutions or at home, and um, sometimes considered an embarrassment. Even you know, sadly. Um, but um, Eunice thought differently. She had a sister who um, had this affliction uh, condition, and uh, she was a social worker herself, Eunice. And she thought that intellectually challenged people had more to offer uh, than they had been allowed up to that point. Uh, she was convinced of it, so she. The vehicle she chose to explore that was a sports competition, and it was a, it was very much an experiment. Nobody knew everybody nobody knew how this was going to work out, but it was a uh, a huge success. Uh, within the year, it became uh, 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 a national event. Uh, in '71, a couple of years later, uh, the International Olympic Committee gave them permission to use the word Olympic in the, in their name, um, but. Um, it, it, it became a, a, a big deal and um, and evolved into what it is today. Um, 
and I think there are like five million participants at this point. Um, and then in 1989, basically 20 years after um, uh, UNIS started it, they added uh, Unified Sports, that's a registered name, to the um, Special Olympics program. And this is pure genius. What they did was they, they uh, paired elementary, middle, and high school students with Special Olympics athletes to train, to play together. Uh, they have different programs. So sometimes they'll play, they'll compete with and against each other in basketball games, and sometimes they'll just train together depending on the situation. And uh, what it brought in is a few million more people into the mix, uh, volunteers basically. And the benefits on both sides have been just incredible. The the obvious beneficiaries, of course, were the Special Olympic athletes who who got to partner and become friends with these high school kids or, or grade school kids, depending on, on their age. I, I think the Special Olympians range in age from 8 to, to like, 25. Uh, but they benefited, they, they've benefited hugely from this. And, of course, the high school kids and the grade school kids have benefited as well because, uh, first of all, they're exposed to a, a part of the segment of the population that they might not have known much about, might have even teased or laughed at, you know, uh, uh, at some point, but that all changes once they uh, become partnered. And uh, anyway, that is a huge and ongoing success. And I, I find this very heartening. Uh, uh, recently, uh, in one of the states, uh, somebody started a unified robotics program where, you know, you have, you know, schools have robotics teams and they compete. Well, they've, they've made that uh, a unified event in one state so that these kids who are involved in robotics uh, bring in uh, Special Olympics uh, athletes and involve them in robotics. And uh, in Arizona, they've started a unified, sport, uh, unified arts. Uh, so clearly there's no end to where this could all go, and it's, and it's all good. Um, an interesting thing uh, that you, you know, Marshall, we've heard it before. There's this ongoing debate when it comes to awards and trophies. Do you award uh, school kids trophies based on merit, or uh, do you give uh, everybody participation awards? That that goes back and forth, and there's no real solution. But Eunice, you know, way back before this argument even started, I think probably hit on the solution, which is uh, kind of in the middle ground. Um, when they have a game, first of all. Um, when they before they hold the games, these kids are training year round. By the way, there are, there are four games. Every season has a game. They train train year round, um, and uh, before the the actual event, they take great pains to group athletes by ability, so that they're very closely, uh, you know, and whether it's times, distances, no matter what the the event is, they're they're pretty closely uh, matched, and uh, when at the end of the games, uh, the winners are awarded just like the Olympics. They, they award a, a gold, silver, and bronze medal to the first, second, and third place. Then they give uh, colored uh, ribbons to places four through eight, if they're that many. And if, if athletes have uh, been disqualified, uh, you know, that can happen just like any other sport, or they, for one reason or another, they can't finish the event, they're given ribbons to signify that they were there and maybe give them something to work for. So, you know, there's, there's definitely, they, they definitely award uh, the, the winners. Um, they recognize the, the lesser winners, the, the four through eight places, and they, and they acknowledge for the kids who just couldn't finish for one reason or another that they were there and, and have something to work for. Um, I remember Marshall a few years ago, but well, some more than a few years ago now, I think it was back in the 80s, uh, Salisbury hosted the Winter Games, Special Olympic Games for Connecticut, and Swasa was very much involved in that, and a lot of us volunteered. And uh, I was involved uh, with a cross-country skiing competition, and uh, I, uh, it was an extraordinarily moving experience. I just remember one athlete, he he wasn't he wasn't a youngster, he might have been up on, on the... Uh, upper limits of the, the age scale there. He's in his 20s. He was cross-country skiing. And he was, like all of them, intellectually challenged and blind. 
And this this guy is he's cross country skiing. He doesn't have anybody holding on to him or anything. I don't. Clearly, he was using the the track that his skis were in to to guide him. But that's all he was doing. And I thought, wow, when you talk about being challenged, I mean, uh, you know, it makes you wonder uh, what have I got to complain about? Uh, anyway, it's a, a wonderful organization. Um, there aren't a lot of events that happen right here in, in, in our part of the world. Um, over at Hotchkiss School, they have a swimathon to raise money for the swim team. Uh, and most of the actual events are held uh, in other parts of the state, but we have athletes all over the place. There are athletes from our area that uh, that uh, benefit from it. So, wonderful organization uh, started by a great lady and um, and. Uh, uh, a brave move back then. I mean, it, it broke new ground because uh, basically uh, it changed our view on on what people can do, what their abilities uh, can be. So, uh, a great organization. You know, it's interesting uh, participation. Uh, just imagine this: uh, when you when you're a member of the Olympics, you get a letter uh, that you are an official member of the Olympic Games of that year. Uh, that is like getting a participation thing where everybody can hold on to whether you get a whether you get a gold medal or silver medal or not uh you still are identified as a member of that team and i think by by what special olympics does is the same thing uh when you when you get a ribbon you 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 participated in in their olympic in their olympic games uh, you know back when i was young uh we when you, if you went out for a baseball team in let's say little league and you couldn't make little league there was always then minor league yeah, and you got to participate in minor league. Yep. Uh, things have changed a little nowadays, but um, it's it's a topic that's really interesting. But I think, and I was at that Special Olympics. I was uh, doing radio recording at that mm-hmm. Special Olympics to talk about, and there's just something amazing about watching those Special Olympics athletes uh, do what they do, uh, and uh, every one of them should get recognition. Uh, yeah. Just like I'll be honest with you, anybody that any any child that participates in any activity like that. Get recognition. It yep. doesn't mean that you, you you won, but you know you went out and you participated. Yeah, yeah, so. I agree. I wouldn't uh, argue. Can't argue with Eunice. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> All right, Willie. We'll talk with you next week. Okay, Marshall. Thanks a lot. You T- take care. Take care. Bye. Willie Hallahan, SportingACause.com on the web.